Jesus is Lord. Say it with me now. Jesus is Lord. Proclaim the Lord Jesus. He is Lord. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. And this is the last of a 12-part series on how to renew your church. We have talked about all kinds of things. Maybe I'll give you a real, real quick review. We talked about what is a parish. We talked about sacraments and about the gifts of the Spirit, about the ministry of the Word, about Christian community, about the church home, keeping holy the Lord's Day, the Eucharist, intercession, spiritual warfare, discipling and equipping. And the last one is evangelization. Winning the world for Christ. That's our last subject. And as every church must do, we must go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's get together and let's begin to praise God. We do not only teach, but we worship. So we have a number of people here who are going to join in and worship the Lord. And we just start to praise Him. Lord, send your spirit. Satan, get out of here. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, 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 Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I'm 
forgiveness. Twelve weeks we've been teaching on how to renew your parish and, and we just don't want to let this all be in vain. And it would be in vain if we haven't repented of, of our sins. Let's ask forgiveness at this second. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can be forgiven. Thank you for your blood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you will forgive anybody, no matter what. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you will forgive right at this second, without delay. Christ, have mercy. Jesus, you will call us to forgive in the very same way. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let's pray right now. Father, we pray that everyone who's ever listened to any of these programs would be totally committed to you and filled with the Holy Spirit. Any holds the devil has on anybody. In Jesus' name, Satan, get out of here. Lord, we pray for so many people to see this program all around the world, all for your honor and for your glory. Jesus, 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 right now, right now, Lord, we can't live without you. Right now, Jesus, transform our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to get into the Word of God, the great commission, the great command, Matthew 28. A reading from Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus came forward and addressed them in these words. Full authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to carry out everything I have commanded you. And know that I am with you always until the end of the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, thank you, Mark. I hope you're excited. I hope you're happy about Jesus. That's what it's all about. We're going to talk about evangelization, about spreading the good news. The word evangelos means good news. And when you know Jesus personally, when you fall in love with Jesus, you can't help but go and tell everybody the good news. Now I have the globe here. And this reminds us of the entire world. We see all these continents. Right now, there are about five billion, five billion people right here. Five billion people. A little over a billion of them have met Jesus Christ. Know his name. Do you understand? But that means there are four billion, approximately four billion people who do not know Jesus Christ, who do not know what this life is all about, who do not know what it means when we die and what happens after death, who do not know that they can have God living in them and they can have communion with God and they can have an inheritance as adopted sons and daughters of God. They do not know what it means to be healed. They do not know what it means to be freed, to come out of darkness into the marvelous light, to be no people and not the people of God to have no mercy and to now have the mercy of God. They don't know what the Holy Spirit is all about. Do you see what we're talking about? Four billion people approximately do not know Jesus Christ and if you love Jesus and if you love people, that's all we need to talk about because that's plenty right there. Do you see what I mean? You don't have to talk to people about evangelization. You have to talk to people about love. If you talk to people about love, the rest of it will automatically happen. 
I've had a few seminars on evangelism and things like that, and you tell people, here's a particular technique, here's how you go up and witness to a person, here's how you share your faith, here's a five-step approach, here's a three-step approach, here's a two-step approach, here's an 18, 14 step approach. Oh, please, just don't go on with that. I've done that for a while. Let's just drop all that stuff and let's just talk about falling in love with Jesus. When people fall in love with Jesus, the rest of it all falls right into place. I'm not saying you don't learn anything from various techniques, but that's not the main point. The main point is that you're in love and when you're in love, you're going to tell everybody. Just imagine if I said, we're going to have seminars for um, girls who are engaged. And the seminars are on how to tell people about your fiancé. How many girls would come to that seminar? Nobody would. Nobody would need to. Every girl who's engaged knows how to tell people about their fiancé. They don't need any training. They don't need any seminar. They're in love. And they'll just, they'll just express it. That's all there is to it. It should be the same with Christians. We don't have to have a bunch of Christians. A lot of Christians have seminars to... Uh, kind of put salve on their consciences because they haven't fallen in love enough to go around and tell everybody about it. They have seminars on evangelization in order to not evangelize. In order to go up in judgment day and say, Lord, I did not go and make disciples of all nations, but I went to a several seminars on the subject. Well, <laughs> the Lord said, well, what? what's that? It's like going up to Judgment Day and saying, Lord, I didn't love my wife, but I sure read a lot of books on marriage. Well, that is, that's not what it's all about. We've got to fall in love with Jesus. We fall in love with Jesus. That's going to take care of it. It says that um, in Philippians 3, chapter 12, and incidentally, in these 12-part series, this all comes from this book, How to Renew Your Parish. If you have not a copy of this book, just send it into the address that's periodically put on the screen. And we will send one to you, okay? All right, get jot that address down. It will be there so you can get it down. Philippians 3, verse 12. It is not that I have reached it yet. That means the final goal of life. Or have already finished my course, but I am racing to grasp the prize if possible. Why is Paul racing? Why have Christians over the centuries been racing to tell the good news, to fight the fight, to run the race? Why have they been racing since? I have been grasped by Christ Jesus. Since I have been grasped by Christ Jesus, since he has put his arms around me, since he has touched me and freed me from my sins, since he has touched me and healed me of my hurts, since Jesus Christ has embraced me and kissed me and shown me the Father's love and poured out his Holy Spirit, since I have been grasped by Jesus Christ. That is why I run. That is why I'm turned on. That is why I'm telling the good news. That is why I am an evangelist. That is why I'm making disciples of all the nations because I have been grasped by Jesus Christ. You don't have to talk all about the different things about evangelism. All you've got to do is get grasped by Jesus Christ. And then this whole world, these four billion people who do not know Jesus Christ, you'd be surprised how many hundreds, thousands, and even millions of them you can tell about Jesus once you are grasped by Jesus Christ. It says that we speak out of the abundance of our hearts. Oh, when you meet Jesus Christ, when he lives inside of you, when he just wells up inside of you, you speak out of the abundance of your heart the good news of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. The love of Christ impels us. What's our motivation? What's our driving force? The love of Christ impels us who have reached the conviction that since one died for all, you know who one is, Jesus, all died. Ever since I found out Jesus died for me, he loved me that much. Ever since I knew that I knew, ever since it got out of my head and into my heart, I have been impelled and motivated and driving to tell everybody about Jesus Christ. That's what that's all about. Evangelization just means falling in love and acting like it. It's just as simple as that. The greatest evangelists of all times have not been the people who were so articulate. The greatest evangelists of all times have not been people who were well educated. The greatest evangelists of all times have not been people who were great administrators, who had great minds. 
the greatest evangelists of all times were people who have been evangelized powerfully, who have met Jesus Christ in a life-changing way, and they've never got over it. That's what evangelism is all about. And goodness knows we've got a lot of evangelism to do around the whole world, but a lot in the parishes, a lot of times you look at this globe, you say, oh, yeah, look at those pagan nations in Africa. Oh, boy, they sure need it. Look at Cameroon. Look at Sudan. Look at Chad. Look at the Congo. Look at Kenya. All oh, those poor savages need to meet Jesus. Look at India over there and Calcutta. Oh, look at those cities that they don't know anything about Jesus. Oh, look at China and those communists over there. They don't know anything about Jesus, those pitiful people. But look at Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio, they don't know anything about Jesus either. But they've got churches all over the place. Yes, but just because you're in church don't mean you're in Jesus. If God had his way, he would be. But a lot of people in the churches need to be evangelized. They've never met Jesus. How do I know that? Because they would, if they met him, they'd be acting like it. If they met him, they'd be running around telling everybody, he's alive. He died for me. He lives within me. I will live forever. I've got good news. But when you don't say it, you don't have it. If you're not an evangelist, you're not evangelized. Do you see what we're talking about? So there's a need for so much evangelism to take place in the church, in the church, to save the saved of all things. Now, the church is sometimes the most difficult place to evangelize. I tell you, I, the, the most, I've taught and preached and on television and the radio and been in all different kinds of churches of different denominations. I've preached out on the street. I've preached in the prisons. I've preached in all kinds of situations. I've preached to people who were down and out, to people who were alcoholics, to people trapped in sin, to people trapped in drug addiction. I've preached in all kinds of situations. And I tell you, the most difficult place, the most difficult place to spread the gospel is in the church on Sunday. It's more, it's more difficult than in the street. It's more difficult than in a bar. It's more difficult than in a foreign land. The most difficult place to spread the gospel, to evangelize, is in a church on Sunday. Some people believe the people in the church have just got, they've been vaccinated. Now, vaccinated means you just get a little bit of the germ so you never catch the full thing, you know. Now, most people in church that have been vaccinated, they got just a little taste of Christianity so they never really get the full Christian thing. You see what I'm talking about? So it's very, very difficult. And boy, talk about high ground. You know, Mark 4 talks about the sower and the seed. And there's four different kinds of ground. Talk about hard, pavement, concrete ground. You're sure going to find it in the churches. And then some of it's rocky stuff. So you, you share it, but it doesn't amount to anything. And some of it, uh, the people accept it, but they never really grow because of all the thorns, all the cares and desires and cravings of life. And, of course, there are, it's, they get the 30, 60, or 100-fold harvest. But I'm telling you, when, you, when you try to spread the good news in the context of the church, it ain't just a simple matter of just saying it. You've got to break some ground, if you know what I mean. You've got to break the ground. Now, the good thing about the Word of God is, it can either be a seed or it can be something like salt that breaks ground. You know, like, how can you break a uh, blacktop pavement up? Well, you put some salt on it. Salt will eat through that. You remember what you did last winter? That'll break it up. Um, you put some ice and snow there and you melt it and freeze it and melt it and freeze it. Boy, that'd break up the, the toughest concrete. Put big potholes in the middle of the, of the street. You know, there, there are little things like ice crystals and salt that can break up ground. Now, the Word of God is not only a seed, but it's like an ice crystal or salt, and it'll break ground up. So if you give it up and people don't accept it, it'll break up the ground for, for you. That's pretty good. Now, of course, then you've got rocky ground, which still doesn't work, but it means at least they get a little more open, and you just keep throwing it, breaking it up. You've got to do some high quality yield. That's why I don't believe in any of these short sermons. Because when you're breaking ground, you just can't just you know, sprinkle a little, a little dust on the, on the pavement. You've got to throw a lot of junk on it. You know, you've got to really do something. 
And of course, when you get to ground breaking, the ground is getting broken down saying, thanks, I needed that. They don't, they don't, ground don't say that. Ground says, quit throwing all that junk on me. But uh, we need to break some ground. You know, a lot of people should be sitting there and say, I can't put up with this stuff. I, just, I don't like these long I don't like all this preaching. I don't like all these preaching and, and quoting the Bible. Of course you don't like it. Ground don't like getting broken up, but it's good for you. But you got to break up the ground. You just, you just get into a church and you just start some Bible study. You just walk in and look at the people from the scriptures and just hand them out, mail them out, make them Christmas cards, make them Easter cards, make them any cards, make them birthday cards, any way, any way you can. Get the word out. Get the word out. That's going to break up a lot of ground. you got to break a lot of ground in churches. The churches really, really need some help. Uh, they really need some ground breaking. It's very, very tough. Very tough to get the gospel across. But you can. You can do it. Because God will do it. Remember Nicodemus? John chapter 3, a very religious person. And uh, Jesus, he was talking to Jesus. Why don't we talk about your signs and miracles? I think that's a very interesting subject. And Jesus says, uh, I don't care if it's interesting. Unless you are born again, you can't enter the kingdom of God, Nicodemus. Nicodemus, I know you're a leader. I know you're religious. I know you all this, know all this stuff. I know that you got a lot of money. I know you got a nice job. I know you work for the church. I know you're all that. But don't, don't bother me with all that stuff. You need to be born again, Nicodemus. Will you, will you believe me? You need to be born again, Nicodemus. And, and Nicodemus put Jesus off for a couple of years or so. Finally, when Jesus died on the cross, guess what? Nicodemus came forward and said, I'm changing my whole life. I'm, 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 I used to be a secret disciple of Jesus. I never really would acknowledge him publicly, but now I acknowledge him publicly. I accept him as Lord. I confess on my lips that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that he's risen from the dead. Nicodemus, I, that old church door, that set in his ways, that tough one to get through to, because he's been vaccinated against the real thing, he changed. He changed. He changed. So you can do it. Nothing is impossible with God. That's the theme of our whole series of teachings. Nothing is impossible with God. So I sometimes I turn to God and say, God, send me to Africa where we can really have a good time over there. Send me to Africa where I have thousands and thousands of converts, more than I get in 10 years over here. God said, I ain't sending you to Africa. I'm sending you to Cincinnati. He said, oh, come on, God, give me a break. He so said, God, all these great things are doing all around the world. And I'm over here in the, you know, in the dry bones territory. God said, well, somebody's got to be in the dry bones territory. You know, I'm not counting. I just want you to be faithful to me. You understand? Maybe you get in that dry bones church, you get in that dead church, but you got to be where God sends you to be. And you get there, and you just just spread the word. But you got to fall in love. When you fall in love, you keep doing it even if nobody listens to you. So I don't care if you listen to me or not. I'm in love anyway. I don't care if they even accept it. I wish they would, but if they don't, I'm just in love. You know, when, when a person's in love, it's kind of hard to, to fight with them, you know. Like if somebody came up to you and said, oh, my fiancé, he's so great, and I'm so happy to be marrying him, and I'm so excited, and this is what I've been praying for for years, and he's so great. What are you going to do? You're going to go up to her and say, I disagree with that. Well, you, you know, you just say, well, if you love him, good for you. You, know, you can't hardly contradict a witness. You, you know, understand what we're talking about. Now, as we conclude this series of teachings, these 12 uh, teachings, I'm going to ask you, we have a witness or two. There are a few people here, I'm going to just, I don't know if God put it in your heart or not, but I guess we'll find out.